We'll go to chapter 17, right? Imperfect markets. They say, in the perfect market, buyers and sellers have potential access to the same information. There is symmetric information. However, many, many decisions are based on imperfect information. So both buyers and sellers not find, do not find how the information they need to make the decision that maximize their welfare. So there is then information failure or information gap. So there is a perfect market. In reality, no perfect is mar no no, said, no market perfect. perfect no market no market is perfect. It is a perfect market because there is symmetric information, which means you and I have access to the same information needed to maximize our welfare. That makes it a perfect market. But because every now and then, consumers do not really have access to information, so it allows them it makes them to behave irrational. So that means. They are acting the way they acted. They are acting the way they acted because they lack information about the benefits or the cost of that consumption. That makes them to overestimate or underestimate the consumption. So because you lack access to information, because you lack access to information, you might feel that the consumption of that product is not good for your health. Because you don't even know if it is healthy to take it or not. So but you have assumed that it is not healthy to take it. As a result of that, you reduce your consumption. That means you underestimate the benefit of consuming it. But you are supposed to consume it. But for the fact that you don't have access to the information, so that makes you to consume less. Mm -hmm. Too little or too much is irrational. So that means there is information gap. On the other hand, if you think you have enough, enough information that makes you to consume more, on the other hand, you might not even have enough information to know that the consumption of it, much consumption of it, is even harmful to your health, but you wouldn't know because you lack information. information. So you overestimate or underestimate the consumption of certain products. As a result of that, you behaved irrational. So we are unable to maximize our welfare because we don't have access to information that is needed to decide to make decisions. That is what asymmetric information is, information gap. So because the, mar the market is supposed to be perfect, but for the fact that there's information gap in between the, mar between the market, between producers and consumers, then it is an imperfect market. Do you understand imperfect market? Yeah. So, so, because there's imperfect market, now look at the graph here. It said buyers possess imperfect information, overestimated, yes, that's the point. So, because we, we lack information about production, we overestimate the benefit of the product as a result of buy, as a result of that we buy more of the product mm -hmm. and on the other hand if we over underestimate the benefit of the product we buy less and pay less so overestimating the benefit of the product makes us to demand more for the product the demand curve will shift rightward the market is imperfect and we will be willing to pay more for such product because we have overestimated the benefit for products that we are supposed to understand or know more about it but because we over underestimated the benefit of it, we want to consume it less and want to pay less on it. As a result of that, we won't be maximizing our welfare. So that is what information gap will bring about. Do you understand an imperfect yes, market here? Yeah. Any question about that? No, so that takes us to the market for second-hand cars. The problem of asymmetric information was first outlined by the Nobel Prize winning economist George Akerlof in 1970. He published a paper in which he used the example of a second-hand car to discuss the problem of asymmetric information. He argued that buyers of second-hand cars do not know whether any individual second-hand car is a good car or whether it is a lemon, a very poor quality car with significant defects. Buyers therefore have to guess whether or not a second-hand car is of good quality. Because they do not know, they are only prepared to offer to pay average prices for better than average quality cars. Owners better than owners of better than average quality cars therefore tend not to sell them because they cannot get a high enough price. But second hand car for sale become mainly average or below average quality. Buyers therefore are not prepared to pay average prices for a second hand car and therefore start to over offer below average prices. So as a result of that, owners of average quality cars then feel the, that they are not getting a high enough price for their car and so stop selling them in the market. So basically, according to George Aklov in 1970, the market for second-handed cars collapsed because sellers of second-hand, average second-hand quality cars are not able to get an equivalent on the price that a second-handed average quality car should have. Meanwhile, buyers do not want to pay 
an average price for a second-handed second quality car. So because both buyers, the, the, the seller of the car knows the situation of the car, but the buyer of the car does not know. So there's always going to be asymmetric information between both buyers and sellers. As a result of that, Judge Akilov, Akilov said the market for second-handed cars collapsed. In practice, the market still exists. Why? For example, consumer protection laws in many countries state that cars dealer must sell cars that are minimum are in a good enough condition to be driv driven safely. So, Akilov, the criticism about Akilov is that the market for second-handed car is still existing and is in existence anyway. Why? The first reason is that there's always consumer protection right, which means consumers are protected from sellers of second-handed cars which are not in good condition. You cannot sell it according to law and no one is above the law. So the law has protected consumers from buying a second-handed car that is of, of, not, of no quality. That's the first point made here yeah, and it is real. The second one, the price of the car is also determined by its age and how far it has traveled in the, its lifetime. So to sell the car also, it has to come with the mileage. So it means we can still base our information on the mileage. On the mileage. Do you understand? That's the second yeah. point made there. And it, however, it remains true. And the last one, consumers can find an approximate guide to the price of the car by buying the car price guide or looking on the internet. There's always um, the open soup where you can significantly check different prices of the same car that buyers want to, so old sellers want to sell. So that would allow you to come to an average price that you want to, you want to buy. So mostly there's information with technology, with internet, information is always available. So people have access to information than in the 1970s anyway. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So now we have more access to information. So whatever information we need, we can as well get it. Mm, yeah. So that makes the market for second-hand cars still, be, still in existence, still make it to be in existence. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Unlike a new car, a new car is a new car. The, there's always a market price for it. Mm. Any question about no, the market for second-hand cars? Mm -hmm. No, thank you.